and welcome to Awesome Country. I'm here with two people who need very little introduction, two heroes of the equestrian world, um, Pippa and William Funnel. Hi guys, thank you very much for coming. Well, we're in your house, thank you for talking to me today. Um, first of all, congratulations, you both had quite an impressive year. Obviously, Pippa, you've been to uh, World Equestrian Games um, with your horse redesigned. How was that? Yeah, I mean, at the start of the year, if someone had said to me I was going to go to, to the World Equestrian Games, I would have thought, no, definitely, no, it wouldn't come into the equation because I felt the horse, well, I, I, you know, I, I would have loved to have gone, but I didn't know whether I'd have anything ready for it. And then it just, horses never stopped sort of amazing you, really, and I was really impressed with how he came on through the spring and he won Bramham yeah. later on in, in the spring, and then from that he was listed um, by the selectors. And then we did Barbary in the autumn, and I think the selectors were very impressed with how he went there. And I mean, I was absolutely delighted when he was named in the six. I thought maybe he might come onto the reserve list, mm. so I was quite surprised when when he was put in the six. He seems like an amazing horse. He's he's always been very talented. He's the mm. most fabulous cross country horse. He's I've always sat on him right from. The very very early days as a four year old, like he had something special about him cross country, um, and and that's really I think why he went and you know in most cases if yeah. someone had said take a nine year old to the world to world games I would have said they're not going to be ready yeah but in this case he's always found the cross country easy and and he's always been brave and and sensible but bold um, so in fact it was worth, worth the challenge. And the dogs obviously the agree dogs with you. Too, yeah. <laughs> so you've had some amazing horses, Primal's Pride, Supreme Rock. Um, how does redesign compare to those? I would very much say that um, I would put him in the same league as yeah. those two. Um, definitely, I mean, again, he's another big horse and with all the scope in the world, he's got plenty of scope. I would possibly say he would be easier cross country, actually would definitely be easier cross country than both Supreme Rock and, and Primrose Pride. He's still got a bit more work to do, you yeah. know, we're not there He's yet. only nine, isn't he? He's he? only yeah. nine yet, and I did go to the World Equestrian Games feeling on the dressage front that, you know, he can do all the movements, but he's just not that experienced at that level. I mean, it literally just stepped up to doing that four-star test, sort of, well, when I heard yeah. I was going, and I thought, oh my God, I haven't done this. And actually, riding the test um, in Kentucky was the first time he's ridden that test in a competition. Wow, and you came fifth. <laughs> I did come fifth. I mean, I was a bit, a little bit gutted. I know it seemed silly at the time to yeah. a lot of people, but I was actually quite disappointed at the, the time with my dressage because I had a few mistakes in the test, which I, I blame myself for, mm. so I was a little bit cross with myself because I knew he wouldn't really threaten the actual top horses, but I think... You know, those were yeah. those few mistakes, and as it happened, those probably a couple of mistakes which I felt were down to me did, did cost me a medal. And with him being so young, I'm assuming that he's going to be hopefully a 2012 Olympic horse. Is this the aim for him now? Well, you know, <laughs> of course, it would be, you know, that it would be great to, to, to aim for that. And I mean, I've got a couple of other nice yeah. young horses, and that's where William and I both, you know, for sure, we're two of many, many people in this country that 2012 is, is a goal, but obviously the, you know, we've got to prepare the horses right, they've got to be fit, they've got to be sound, and they've mm. got to be going very, very well, because it's going to be seriously tough competition just to, to get there. Do you think um, at the moment there's more competition for these Olympic places, because you guys have been, you've been to a couple of Olympics yourself, do you think it's harder now to get into the squad? I think... Um, I mean, it's always a difficult one, isn't it? Um, but I think I mean, for everybody, 2012 is obviously a big. It's, it's London. Gone. Yeah. Is a makes it even more special in for for Great Britain. So I think everybody has got that in the back of their mind. I think all the top riders, mm. whichever, Sophia, and well, I'm sure all top athletes. So I think hopefully that it is tough competition it means we're mm. going to send good teams and we're going to. Have you bring back some medals, so I think it's important that it is tough to get on the teams. But I think it, I think there's a lot of not good young horses coming through eventing and show jumpers. So, yeah. um, so talking of good horses, I read a quote that from you saying that Billy Congo is probably the best horse you've ever had. Is this is this true? Is he amazing? Is 
we've heard? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And this this year to, to be on the you know, winning Nations Cup team on I'm home to Exeter was something that was ahead of where I wanted wanted to be with mm. him really and to have done placing the couple of Super League Grand Prix and jumped to three Super League Nations Cups was, you know, if I'd ended up the year, you know, I'm quite happy where we finished in the year and uh, you know, look forward to you know, next year I need to, you know, push to get on the European team really yeah. as a prelim for the year after. So, you know, we start the year in the shake up really, so yeah. And uh, are you going to be heading to Olympia? Are we going to see you over Christmas? I, th I think with Billy Congo, I've had a big year, um, you know, to, he's from where he started at the beginning of the year. Yeah. And really my main focus is trying to get to the Europeans for next year. So um, I definitely won't be taking Billy Congo there. I'm going to give him a break and yeah. start him outdoors then. So, um, so I'm not sure whether you will see him. <laughs> I'll be disappointed <laughs> if I don't. Um, so one of the uh, reasons I'm here today is also to talk about the Funnel Factor 2. Um, five years since you last did it. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it, what it's about, what we can expect to see? It sounds very exciting. I mean, yeah, we, you know, it was very successful five years ago. It's something we didn't want to over, you know, that we do every year. Hopefully everybody that came and saw us last time took something out of it and mm. you know enjoyed what they saw as well because we tried to have a mixture between entertainment and education. I think it's a good time of year now where for us we're sort of trying to improve ourselves and also for next year and different training ideas and hopefully people can leave with a few training ideas and hopefully a bit of a snigger as well. <laughs> but, uh, well and, and then it's an insight into how how we work together really yeah. as well. You do get the positive life. <laughs> Banter going on, and um, you know, obviously the, the Billy stud with the with the homebreds with Billy Congo and yeah. some of Pips are the. There will be Billy horses we'll ride. Up That's why I was, my horses, next question so, was going to be: Is it going to be kind of a showcase for? <coughs> it will be, but well. not, you know, basically it's training young horses, which they are, and and yes, you know that that'll be mm. uh, part of it as, as well, which I think hopefully people will be interested to see, and you know some of that side of it as well. What's it like working together? Because I mean you must with your schedules you must spend a lot of time apart. Is it do you have quite a good laugh together? Well I say I'm one of the stable jockeys and <laughs> so she's one of the unstable jockeys. <laughs> um, I mean I think I think it's great that we are able to to I think we work very well together really. I think we both we both enjoy the young horses and working yeah. with young horses this time of year and it's nice to be at home with time to spend with the young horses and, and, and I think then you know sometimes you're so busy the competition it's, it is good to concentrate on you know basics of training really yeah. and, and that's where you know if those young ones have got a solid basic training then then um, you know hopefully things go from there so and really to emphasize whether we're jumping or eventing those basics are very similar so we will yeah. have some younger ones and some older ones and um, you know and I, th I think too from 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 both of our points of view, I think when William used to just show jump and I yeah. used to just event, we did often go off in two different directions. So mm. the breeding op operation and producing operation keeps on bringing us back together again. So we're actually doing a lot more together than we ever used to do, didn't we? Over the well, we've been doing this now for quite some time. Yeah. It's not a new yeah. new operation. This, but it's um, you know, it is very much a. A sort of joint venture between the, the three of us, isn't it? And although I'm not going to be doing a sort of high level jumping with Billy Congo, mm. um, he will be coming on tour with us. And uh, I might I be riding. Probably, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's riding. Really another question. Do you do you let each other ride each other's horses? I mean, it must be quite nice because obviously in the eventing you don't jump the meter fifties. And do you sometimes hop on and go right? Just keep sticking it up, get it higher and. Do some more show jumping. Well, I, I have Pinched, been. Pinch one of eyes. Well, one, she's. Pinched. <laughs> produced one. I've just. I produced one and not let him have it. Okay, brilliant. We've we, we, we shared him a bit this year. I took him to Dublin and. and uh, oh, basically, no. the, we'll both go to Sunshine too in the spring and you'll go to. Uh, he should be ready to jump some of the Grand Prix there, which will be. I jumped. I jumped. Billy on show. I jumped the Queen Queens on him at Hickstead and oh, fantastic. jumped a couple of international yes. shows at Hickstead on him. I knew you were doing quite a lot of the show jumping. Do you think you'll ever 
keep on that route, stay in the show jumping or venting? I, I I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say. I mean it's 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 been, I've had a real buzz to it, jumping yeah. obviously bigger this year because I have stepped way out of my comfort zone and mm. jumped a lot bigger fences and I think it it's helped me enormously and I actually think it probably has helped my eventing show jumping mm. um, a huge amount as well and, and when people say, oh are you going to stop eventing and just do pure show jumping, that hasn't even entered my head but I sort of just go with the flow of what horses we've got and, and yeah. for sure. You know, I've got a really nice team of, of eventers, but I'm not trying to get too big a team. You know, I've, <laughs> you know, with, with the size of the operation, there's so many young horses that need producing. So I really, I'll be the first to admit, I do not want to go out every si yeah. every single weekend eventing ten or six to ten horses every single weekend. I'm, I'm past that now. And with the Billy Stud, obviously, you're in collaboration with Donald Barnwell. So. And uh, how did that come about? How, have you worked with him for a long time now? Yes, and we, we've done all, we've sort of been partners in horses or half owners for um, 20 years plus, wow. maybe 25 since I was first of mine. So, um, so yeah, then that's been a long term thing and it's grown and grown and um, yeah, it works very well because Donald does the the hard work, really, <laughs> which is getting the mares in farm and bringing mares in the field and really looking after them yeah. until they come to us. And then we're the production team, so really we complement one another in the fact that um, we couldn't do it without him and I think um, he can do without us, so it's, uh, it works very well. And the same, Donna enjoys the same things as we do, seeing yeah. nice young horses and, and still you know, enjoys being with horses, working with horses and I think um, there's a lot. There's a, there's a lot of hard work to get it, to get where we've where we've got to, and there's still a lot more because for the amount we've bred, we've yeah. now we've got to produce them and, and do the best for them. So you know, it's not only the breeding; it's the production. I know. I think we we need to add too that obviously we can't do it just ourselves. So we have got a, a really good backup team. We've yeah. got some really good guys that work for us, and hopefully. In, in producing these young horses, we're, we're giving a lot of young riders the opportunity to ride a lot of different horses and obviously you know, it's in our best interest to help these guys mm. on the horses so, so you know, then it helps the horses to be produced better and hopefully it's, it's giving them the experience and chance and you know, learn to, to up their game. Because it is incredibly hard stepping out onto the um, ladder and show jumping and eventing if you, if you don't have the backing. So if you're giving young people the opportunity to ride top quality horses, I mean, that's amazing. I think it's so safe for Pippa and I. We both left school and rode with somebody. We and those opportunities, yes. I think, are getting mm. harder and harder. So, um, um, yeah, 